Okay, so it's 5.30. So who all is is cooking with me? Did you guys buy your ingredients? Teresa's no. We got David, yes. Who else? Well, typing in. Julie's nodding her head. I love it. It's great to see you. And then and Karen's raising her hand. Great. Um, I love, if you guys want to turn your cameras on, that's great. It'd be good to see you. And then I was thinking too, if there's anyone's kitchen catches on fire, I can tell you. <laughs> I can manage you guys, but um, so I'm going to do my best to not move too quickly. Um, we're going to go through the recipe first and foremost. Of course, we're making the tofu spring rolls today, which is going to be an experience because I've never made them before. I'm just going into it totally raw. I've gotten some instruction. People have used rice paper before and told me it's not the easiest thing ever. So I did a practice roll and I think I did pretty good, but might be um, kind of messy. I'm looking at the wrong camera here. I'm looking at you guys, not the camera. Um, so yeah, it'll be a learning experience for all. And hopefully there's no technical issues. Again, this is our very first one. So it's just kind of, we'll see how it goes. So today um, with the recipe, just to double check, make sure you guys have everything out and ready to go. Um, we are using tofu. So we're going to, we're actually going to get to this pretty much first and foremost. Um, I have firm, the recipe calls for extra firm. I actually froze this. So it's going to act more like a firm tofu. If you freeze your tofu, believe it or not, it like stiffens up more and it totally changes the consistency and the texture. So um, tofu, we're going to press that here in a minute and then we'll put a little marinade on it too. Um, so that's one of the, the main ingredients. We're putting tofu in our spring roll to add some protein and some nice meaty texture. And then just going through, it's always good to run through the recipe and make sure you have everything. Um, Napa cabbage, or I'm just using regular cabbage. We're going to shred that up. If you already have your stuff cut up, that's great. You'll, you'll just be one step ahead. Um, shredded carrots, got some of those. Chopped cilantro and fresh mint. I actually, I've got my cilantro here. I didn't get mint, I just got basil instead. This is also a great recipe if you're growing any fresh herbs, it's kind of getting into gardening season. So this would be one to come back to if you're growing any of this stuff. Um, butter leaf lettuce or spinach. Today I'll be using spinach. Um, a cucumber, we're gonna thinly slice those up. A red bell pepper. I've got a lot of bell peppers here, but I'm just gonna use one. Um, and then rice paper. Were you guys able to find rice paper okay? <laughs> some people, it was hard. I, oh, look at that. Julie's got some. We had a hard time with it. I found this, um, I found at the co-op brown rice paper, which I was actually kind of excited about. I'm excited to try this today. It's just gonna be a little bit of a more whole grain one. Um, and then the only one we could find here in town or at least close by was these really little guys. I don't know if this is normal or not, but they're pretty tiny. So this is like snack size, but apparently there's a shortage around town with these rice papers. The, um, the Asian markets would probably be a good place to go, but I just went to, where did I go? I went to the co-op and I went, we went to Albertsons, the nice one. So what we got, and then, um, on the back of the recipe has the equipment list. So there's a soup pot on there, which I don't know why the soup pot was put on the equipment list, but you definitely don't need that. So you could put that away. Um, Greg, I see your hand is raised. I don't know if there's any way for me to unmute you. Do you see? Can you use the chat box, Greg? Okay, yes, okay, <laughs> awesome. Good to see you. That was, Greg was in my last chip class. Feels like forever ago that you guys, we were meeting every night. Um, okay, so make sure you've got your knife out. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go through the prep as well. So if you already um, prepped, that's great, but I'm gonna show you my prep here. Um, all the different prep bowls are always helpful, always something to have out. Nonstick skillet, this is what we're gonna be cooking the tofu in. Um, a shallow baking dish, that could vary. This is what I'm using here. I've already have my water in it, but this is for dipping the rice paper into. And something to note is if you have hot water in it, dump it out because we're gonna use cool water to put in there. 
Um, a whisk or a fork for making the sauce, which we're gonna do first. Some plastic wrap, which I have because these you wanna individually wrap these up so you can save them as like a snack um, and you don't wanna like throw them all in a container together. And then a, where'd he go? Oh, he's over here. A basting brush or a pastry brush because we're going to paint the sauce onto the tofu to cook it. All right, you guys ready to get started? Okay. All right, so we're gonna start with the sauce, which I'm going to do in my little bowl here. So we're starting with the peanut sauce. I need my fork, where is it? Okay, so I just have regular old just peanut butter actually. This is what I got from the, the kitchen um, here at the, the hospital. They gave me a bunch of groceries for free and this is what they gave me. So nice creamy peanut butter. We are doing a quarter cup of peanut butter. So we're going to put all this in there. Okay. I don't make too much of a mess. All right. And then after we put the peanut butter in the bowl, we're doing three tablespoons of soy sauce. So I'm going to measure this out. I'm using coconut aminos, which if you've taken my classes before, you've heard me talk about this like a billion times. But if you haven't, this is a really nice low sodium alternative to soy sauce. It's made out of coconut nectar is what they say is in there. Um, but it has a, a really nice soy saucy type flavor and it uses like 75% less sodium than regular soy sauce. So we're doing three tablespoons in there. So we'll have enough sauce by the end of this to have a dipping sauce for these and then also for basting the tofu. Okay, so three tablespoons in there. And then this one's up to you guys if um, not find rice paper. So I have April wraps, that works. Hope it works. <laughs> I've heard they're a lot easier to use. So I, that was something people were like, why don't you use those? They're way easier. I'm like, well, I don't know. It's just, just what the recipe is. So. Um, sriracha is the next ingredient. Of course, you guys probably know this is hot. Or chili garlic paste would work too. Yeah, I put that on there. One to two tablespoons. Um, I'm probably gonna do two because I like it spicy. But if you don't, if you do one, honestly, you could skip this if you don't want to. You could also throw some like red pepper flakes in there if you wanted to kind of dull the, the spicy, but uh, dump all this in here. Sriracha or chili. I find that chili garlic paste is a little bit less spicy than sriracha. Okay. And then we have lime juice. So one lime, I'm curious how much this is. I've kind of have it squeezed here, how many tablespoons? So I'm gonna measure this for y'all. Um, got one, two, it might've been a big lime here then. Three tablespoons, might be kind of fast. Okay, that's a pretty simple peanut sauce. And then we're gonna whisk it up here. You know, I think I would prefer chunky peanut butter. That tends to be my favorite. I also like to have the chunks in there, but this might whisk together better. Or you know what too, you could throw this in a, a food processor and get it just beautifully pureed. It's hard to look, I don't know what camera to look at. <laughs> I've got two, two screens up here, it's too much to manage. Okay, so we're gonna mix this. Oh, it's really well combined. And then the rule for every sauce is we have to taste it. Make sure like the flavor. I can smell a lot of lime in this, so I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty zesty, let's see. It is, whoo. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more soy sauce in mine. Sometimes too, in these um, peanut sauces with what I've added before that I think does really well. And I, this could be an optional ingredient if you have this at home, a little bit of maple syrup helps kind of sweeten it up with just peanut butter. There's actually already sugar in there. So maybe that will help. 
but um, for caramelizing, because we're going to be putting this on the tofu, it kind of helps get that crispier edge on the tofu. Um, so yeah, that's something you could also throw in there. If you have any other ideas or if you've ever made peanut sauce um, before and you have other suggestions, type it in. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. Now onto the tofu. So with the firm and extra firm, you can buy them in this package um, in the produce section or a lot of them now, the extra firms are actually vacuum sealed and there's not as much liquid in there, but this is kind of the, the standard plain old, old school tofu. And so I'm going to, this is how I just do it. I always cut just a couple of sides of the tofu and I'm gonna strain off the extra water. And then grab a couple paper towels here. Pat it a little dry. Okay, and then I'm gonna quickly press my tofu. Let me move. So when, when it's, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I grabbed the one that had water in it and splashed it everywhere. So when you have um, <laughs> kitchen disasters, when it's frozen like this, it actually, a lot of the um, moisture kind of suctions out in some way. It strengthens the curd of the tofu when you freeze it. So this won't have to press as long. And that's something in the future too. If you want, that really nice firm chew. Like if you've ever gone to a Thai restaurant and they have really like nice chewy tofu, it's because a lot of them actually freeze it. So that's something. And two, you could just buy, if you get find tofu, that's a really good deal. You could, you know, buy a bunch, throw some in the freezer. All you have to remember is just to thaw it out. So um, that's kind of a quick tip, but I'm probably, I'm not gonna get a ton of liquid out of this one because it was already frozen. But this is the, the pressing technique, if you're new to using tofu, let me back this up here. All I've done, put my tofu on a plate um, that has a rim on it, and then something heavy is what you set on top. And then you can set that for 20 minutes is really all you need. Um, this is an optional step. This is definitely not something you have to do, um, but it just helps kind of firm it up and get some of that extra moisture out of it. So let me write this up here. Is this is just how it goes? I always make a mess. Okay. All righty. So this would be a good time to start warming up your stove top too. I'm gonna get that nice and warm. Pull my hair back because it's driving me crazy. Okay. All righty. But uh, so pressing it again, it kind of helps with some of the firmness, but I don't know. I There was a video I watched recently that was a, like a taste test comparison. It helps a little, but it's not a must. So if you're in a pinch, don't be upset that you you know had to rush through this step. It's not the end of the world. Okay, but now we're gonna, we're gonna get to slicing because we're gonna get the tofu going so we can start making our wraps. So I would turn your skillet to like medium, medium high a good place to start and depending on the skillet that you have like i have here a non-stick skillet that's kind of not the best one in the world so i sprayed a little bit of cooking spray in there or you could take a paper towel that has like some olive oil and just wipe it if you don't trust the non-stickiness of your pan if you have a good non-stick skillet you can totally skip this step but if you have the the skillet that is not non-stick you definitely need to put some type of oil down or else your tofu is going to stick to the pan this up here and then i'm going to move these guys so you can see me and how i'm going to slice this tofu so the goal at least how i'm envisioning this is to cut your tofu so it's about the size of a domino because that i think maybe even a little bit thinner but we're going to be doing little kind of pieces that we put in the skillet because we don't have a ton of room in the in the wraps so we're gonna cut them just so. And so we're gonna figure out what type of cut we can do for that. And move this. Okay. 
warming up. All righty. So, so let's see, I'm going to take my tofu up on its side and I'm gonna cut it right in half. So it's crazy how much firmer it gets when you freeze it. Okay, so you see that? So we should have two squares like this. You cut it, all righty. And then I'm gonna go for thirds here. No, I'm gonna go for quarters. I think that'll be better. So then we have them cut like this. Took that one slab and I'm like, so we have like this. And then I'm not actually gonna cut those in half here. So they're all gonna be about this size. So that gave me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from that half. Might go a little bit thinner on this side because it's not so even. So I, I did five cuts on this one. Okay. So they should look like this. Let's see. Okay. We're tracking. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so we have our tofu cut up. Julie, you doing good? Okay, good. <laughs> I can see you're right at your, your kitchen there. So I want to make sure I'm not going too too fast here. Okay, so tofu is cut. The next step is I'm gonna try to put as many of these in the skillet as I can. C could you put that on? Okay, thank you. So we're gonna grab our tofu and our sauce and our little barbecue brush. And then put the camera down. Pretty good, that looks good. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm just going to immediately start putting my tofu in here. Yeah. Oh, might maybe want to put the big burner on. So laying all my tofu in skillet. This takes kind of a bigger skillet so you can do all the tofu at once. Can hopefully see that. Okay. Oh, I see a few more. Dana Maria. Hi, guys. Awesome. How many people are in here? Fifteen. Pretty good. Okay. All right. So my pan is slowly but surely heating up. These electric burners are a whole thing. Um, but hopefully we can get them all in there in the same skillet because then and and separate them too, so you've got some space. That'll be helpful. Then we can just get even cooking times across the board. Okay. Ready? Make sure that's good to go. All right. Now I'm going to give this just one more whiff to make sure. Could be something also. If you had an air fryer, you could do your tofu that way, where you can. What I would probably do is put my tofu in a shallow baking dish, cut up like this first and then put the marinade in with the tofu and then pull that and then throw it in the air fryer. And then you can get them really nice and crispy. It'll cook up a lot quicker and you get to use your air fryer, which is so fun. We got to do one of these classes on using the air fryer. Um, I love mine, especially for tofu, it's the best. Okay, so now that they're all in there and they're starting to warm up, all we're gonna do is just paint on some of this peanut sauce on just this one side here. So just pretend you're Bob Ross, a painter, painting peanut butter on everything. <laughs> and I believe, Callie, does it say just to do one side of the tofu on the recipe? Okay. This is gonna help just cook in a little bit of flavor. You could do these just plain, and the flavor will be fine because at the end of the day, it's going in a wrap with a bunch of veggies and you're dipping um, 
into peanut sauce afterwards. So this is just to add a little pizzazz and flair to your tofu here. Good, I can see you guys all cooking. This is awesome. Okay. All right, and Callie too, if you could help me, how long on each side does it say to do for the tofu? Two to three minutes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my eye on it. It's always hard when you're using kind of someone else's kitchen. Like I have gas burners, this is electric. Sometimes you never know with these things. So I'm gonna keep my eye on it, but we're gonna aim for about two to three minutes on each side. So maybe setting a timer is, is a good idea. Um, never a bad idea, but until it's golden brown and perfectly cooked. All right, I'm gonna grab some tongs. That might be a, a good tool to grab for yourself as well. See if I have any that metal ones. Those plastic ones. Okay. So is this anyone's first time cooking tofu? Greg's oh, and Julie's. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Hopefully this is a good one to get started with. <laughs> Again, everyone's taste preference is different, but um, isn't it satisfying to cut? I love cutting tofu. It's like it's just perfect slices every time. It's great. Um, but yeah, this will be this will be tasty. It smells good. Yes, it does. Okay. Pan might be a little bit big for this burner. All right. Okay. Shelly's been wanting to learn to make spring rolls for a long time. Me too. I have, again, I've never made them before. And I think it was actually one of our um, patients and someone who went through the CHIP program was asking about these for, um, she was going on a conference and she's like, do you think that would be a good food to make up for the week? Like, you know what, I think it would be. And that's, you just inspired me for our first cooking class. We're gonna do tofu spring rolls. So uh, you guys inspire me all the time too, um, which is great. So, um, but yeah, I know using the, the rice paper, this is like, I'm on another planet right now. So it's new. And so, what I always like to do, I don't know about you, but I like to clean while I cook. So while this is going, I'm just going to rinse some of these off. Always a good idea. Now, my boyfriend does not believe in doing this. So when he cooks, it's just a giant mess at the end of it. But I like to, to clean as I go. I'm going to use going here. Keep my eye on those guys. Okay. All right. Okay, let's test these. A little bit of golden browning on there. Kind of have to shift these around. Mine still seem to go. Has anyone had to flip theirs yet? No? Okay. Alrighty. Low cooker. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside because I won't need my peanut sauce for a while. And while that's getting its nice golden brown coloring, I'm gonna start setting out all of my produce prep. So kind of get my kitchen space organized for the next step. I'm gonna cut all this stuff up and start the assembly line. 
the cabbage. I wish I had Napa cabbage for this one. Napa cabbage is like one of my favorites um, of all time. Um, that's one that I can eat raw very easily and put into salads. It's just got like a lighter, lighter um, crunch to it. It's not so hearty as regular cabbage. I made a big mess. We don't, one thing I noticed, we don't have any rags here. All I have is these paper samples. Okay. And that is something too, I, I forgot to mention, if you've got some time while those are cooking, um, getting a, we're gonna use, at least this is one of the tips I was given, is um, a wet paper towel. Because when we're rolling the, um, the spring roll papers, it helps to have a wet paper towel underneath. So if you have another cutting board and a paper, or like a paper towel or a dishcloth, get that wet, kind of wring it out, and then you can lay it on that other cutting board, or you can just put it on your countertop. But having some type of wet surface is really helpful for rolling these. That's one thing that wasn't included in the equipment list that I would suggest um, getting prepped up. So I'm gonna flip these now. Some are looking better than others. Okay. That one's really good. Some of these, I have to do some rearranging here. Okay. Okay. My tofu takes more like five minutes to cook on each side, it seems like. And if you have, you know, if you have extra sauce and you want lots of flavor on these, you could baste the other side too. I don't think there would be anything wrong with that. All righty. Okay, and I'm gonna put some water. So whatever type of dish you have, so I have a baking dish or you could use like a pie pan, just something that where you can lay your rice paper flat into and fully submerge in water and fill this just with regular old room temperature water you don't have to do hot water a lot of the package instructions will say to do hot water but i was told that's not a good idea because they become way too pliable and they kind of break down too quickly when you're trying to roll um with, when you dunk it in hot water Okay. And earlier today when I was watching a video, some lady had some nifty specific device to put her rolling paper in. It was kind of cool. Okay. Um, I've actually done both, but this, this tofu, um, that's a good question. So Dan and Maria asked, do you freeze tofu in or out of the package? You can do both. Um, this time I did it in water and that was actually the first time I ever did that and it it did fine. So um, it might just take longer to thaw is the only thing is what I would think. Yeah. Good question. Okay. How's our tofu looking? Is anyone done? Julie's is done. Cool. Greg's is done. Awesome. So I'm going to double check this other side. Oh, see these ones now. Now these ones are getting hot. Oh yeah, okay. All right, we're gonna just give these one, one more flip because some of these the other side didn't get done on. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna now, and if you're like me where yours isn't completely brown on some of the sides, I'm just gonna kill the heat and let it sit on the burner so it's gonna slowly come down and then um, finish cooking. Now we can get to the produce prep. 
do a little camera adjustment. Up just a little bit. Alrighty. Okay, so we'll just start down the line on our produce. Shredding the cabbage is first. And maybe you already did this, um, but kind of how I like to do it with thin ribbons is I'll cut a flat base on my cabbage. If you have Napa cabbage, you could cut it immediately, like just down the middle. And that would be one way to do this. But what I do is have a flat base and I kind of, I'll cut it at like an angle. So this is, you know, the center of it. I'm gonna go just a little bit off to the side. And I just like to cut down and then it like has these perfect little, you can see like perfectly kind of shredded in half sizes there. So I don't know, that's just, I don't know if that's like a technical thing, but it's just what I've been doing. And I think it's pretty nifty. So we wanna get this really thin. We don't have a ton of room. So you're just kind of like shaving it off of the cabbage. Don't need a ton, okay. All right, but you can see it's kind of like fine little matchsticks of cabbage that I have now. Nice fluffy, something you could definitely put in a salad, but it also looks kind of nice. And then I always pull the big chunks from like the base. I don't like those. So like the white base that's in there. So I always kind of fish those out because then they add big chunks like this that I don't want Get out of here. If you're not in the food waste, maybe you don't like this. I should pull the trash can over here. Okay. All righty, where's my, I need another bowl to put that in. Always gotta have prep bowls. All righty. So the cabbage, ready to go. I'm going to, with my spinach, if, if you're using spinach, you can do this, or you could even, some people like to slice up their spinach into ribbons. I'm actually gonna leave it in these leaves because I'm gonna kind of align them in the bottom in a line while I'm making my rolls. So I'm just gonna leave my spinach as is. And with the butter lettuce, how I saw it done was just kind of big leaves. So almost like, think of ripping them into bite-sized pieces about the size of spinach. Okay, so we've got those done. Okay, now with, the, um, what's the next one? I'm gonna stick with my list here. Shredded carrots. I already, I just bought bag shredded carrots. I hate shredding carrots on my own. So hopefully you did that too, because I'm not gonna prep this. Um, or just like match six size pieces, but we'll just be using a little bit of that. Next is chopped cilantro. So what's nice about cilantro is the stems are light enough and have enough flavor where you can just cut up the stems. You don't have to pull the leaves off. So I'm just going to kind of put my, my cilantro in like a bunch like this. And I kind of like to roll it too, as you can see. And then I've got like a little cilantro spring roll size. And then I'm just gonna do really thin little slices. And if you don't like cilantro, I think I suggested basil as an alternative. I'm doing cilantro and basil in here. Um, but the recipe called for mint. I wish I would have grabbed that. That would be excellent. All three of them would be the perfect little trio. Hi, Bobby. Um, yeah, so we've got nicely cut up little cilantros. I'm gonna put that in back in its bowl. Okay. Okay, and kind of a similar technique with basil, if you're doing that. Have you guys ever heard of the chiffonade cut? Or maybe from plant-based cooking basics, you remember that from that really quick video, but that's my favorite way to do basil. And so all you do is you're gonna have to pick the basil off its little leaves. And then I stack basil in a nice little, all the leaves in the same order, like show. So I'm gonna do, what is that? Like five leaves at a time. And then you take that and you roll it up like a little cigar, that. So you have that nice roll and then off the thing. Cut it into thin little ribbony pieces. 
and it's just perfect. And this is, I like to cut it up and then I put it in little prep bowls and keep it this way in the fridge. And then you have these really nice little ribbons that we're gonna put in here, but also this like garnishes a salad really well. Um, if you ever do like um, nice, good tomatoes with some salt and pepper, you can like put this on there with a little balsamic vinegar and it's really yummy. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna finish all these. <laughs> all right, cutting up the basil. And with the mint leaves, those ones I usually pull from the stem and I would try to bunch those up. And I think getting a fine cut on all of the herbs is a, is a good way to go because we're gonna kind of sprinkle those in at the end for whatever we can get to fit left in the spring rolls. Right, so we got the basil. And I hate it when I have a bunch of stuff in my cutting board. So I'm gonna sweep this off into the trash. Okay, what's next? Already kind of took care of the spinach. Next is the cucumber. Now, I know there's lots of fiber in the skin and this is, you know, it's good for you, but I think the, the skin of the cucumber is gonna be maybe too much in here. So I'm gonna peel most of the skin off. So if you wanna do the same, you can follow along. Maybe you already did that, or maybe you have the skins on and that's great. It's gonna just add a little snappiness, but just for the sake of this recipe, I'm just gonna do some peeling on here. Okay. All righty, and then we're gonna slice this. Now you have a couple of options. Um, someone was telling me they like to do rounds for this, but I'm gonna do matchsticks because I kind of want everything to lay together so I can easily roll it up. So I'm going, I'm team matchstick on this one. Okay, so I kind of cut my cucumber into two and then I'm gonna cut it long ways, right? So you've got flat base for each side. And then again, I'm not like a culinary expert, but for matchsticks, I just kinda go like this. I'm gonna go real thin. So I'm getting pieces like thin. And then what I'm gonna do is cut them long ways like this. So then I get these like tiny little strips. So I'm gonna go all the way across the top first and then I'll cut them in half afterwards. If that makes any sense at all. Cucumbers like to stick to my knife. Okay, this is gonna be a lot of cucumber, so I think I'm just gonna keep it at this half here. Save the other half for later. Okay, so we cut them kind of long ways, so then there are these kind of long strips like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restack them. And them like that. So then they're just a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller. That's how usually too when I do my carrots is just the technique I've taken on. I don't know why this is the way I do it, but it just is. Because you just find something that works and you just stick with it. Okay. That one's already kind of... Okay. For these, I could definitely see like prepping this up ahead of time to help you catch up. So in the future, because we're going to be doing these twice a month um, moving forward, um, in the future, if you've got time to prep um, ahead of time, I think that's a good way to go. But I just, I wanted to show you kind of like my prep techniques, because I think a lot of this I've just absorbed from watching other people prep food and different cooking shows. It's always nice to kind of see how other people do things. Um, We've got a good handful of 
of matchsticks here. All right. Now, the red bell pepper. So mine's weird shaped. It's almost shaped like a poblano pepper. Typically, I like to do this shape because the little cutting technique that I'm going to show you. Um, I don't know. I just, I like, once I discovered how to do this, I was like, oh, that's a really good way to cut a bell pepper. So I'm going to use the, the green one because it's just the shape of a normal bell pepper. This one's making me mad. So um, basically you take your bell pepper and you're going to pop the stem off. That's what I've already done here. And then I put stem down and then I cut around like where the seeds would be. And a lot of that membrane-y stuff starts to come off with it. And then all of your little seeds and innards are stuck to that guy. You guys see that? Pretty cool. <laughs> so I don't know, that's just what works for me. And uh, so then from here, we wanna get this as thin as possible. Um, if your knife isn't sharp, cutting on the waxy side is a pain. So what I always do is I put the waxy side down and then I'm going to slice into the nice grippy side, the, the inner belly of the pepper. So we're going to go thin, thin, thin as possible without cutting yourself into strips. We're just looking for little strips that we can put maybe one or two strips in each spring roll here. Work on your and that coordination with some of these. Oh, there's like a baby pepper that was in that one. Hello. Okay. And then I always too, if there's any white mem membrane part, apparently that adds bitterness, bitterness to the pepper. So I like to pull all that out because who wants bitter peppers? All right. So I think, I mean, that was half of a pepper. I guess I'll just go all the way in. That side's kind of like that side. I like to work with flat bases as much as possible. Mm. And two, don't forget, and maybe you learned this in one of my classes, but all the scraps could easily be saved in a container with a lid that seals like a Tupperware container. Then you throw that in the freezer. And then once you have a full container of chopped up odds and ends from your produce, you can make your own vegetable broth if you want to be super sustainable and, you know, make your own broth too. So there's my peppers. I'm going to put those on the same plate with my cucumbers. I think we're about ready to rock and do the, the theory part. Am I missing anything? Nope. We're going to dip, wrap, or wait, dip, wrap, and roll. Is that what it says on here? <laughs> dip, wrap, and roll. Okay. Just roll off the tongue. All righty. So let me clean my little face here. Again, get, this is my, this is going to be my station that I roll on. So I've got these thin paper towels, got them wet cut on a flexible cutting board. And if anyone has any technique tips for me, type it into the chat real quick because <laughs> I'm going to need it. And I'm actually, I'm going to start with the brown rice paper wrap because I'm really curious about these. I already did the other ones. So this is kind of a, a learning process for me. Um, I think maybe you could pull it down. I think that might be helpful. Let's see. Don't let them get wet, because once they get wet, they're going to start transforming before your eyes. Think about that. I think that looks good. Yeah. Yeah, they don't need to see my head anymore. Okay. Okay, so here's my station. Have my, my, my paper towels out. So, and I want to bring this closer. Let's see. Water trough. 
Okay. So having all of your vegetables grabbable, I'm going to do my lettuces first. So you're going to take your, your rice paper and you're going to just dip it in the water for like one second and then pull it out. And then it's going to start to absorb the water and it's going to change. Like if you've ever had rice noodles before, that's kind of the texture that we're going for. So still mine feels like paper, but it's going to start transforming too as time goes on. So um, I'm going to start loading up some of my ingredients on here. So we kind of have to move sort of quick, but I'm starting with my spinach. And again, we don't want to go too crazy, which is always the problem I have when I'm making like burritos is I put too much in there and then I can't pull it up. So I'm doing my spinach first and some cabbage. I'm going to start small because I have no idea how much these can fit. And I'm going to do some of my carrots. A little bit more pliable, maybe. Okay. And then see, I'm going to do cucumber and you kind of have to be organized and meticulous as we put these in here. So I've got a couple of cukes to do pepper. But pliable. Yeah, I think the brown rice is going to be more rigid and take longer to soak up. Okay, and then sprinkle of cilantro, and then basil, and then the tofu. I if I can get two in there. I'm going to try. Feeling crazy. Okay. Okay, and then for the roll. So what I saw was you take one corner oops, and you bring it in like that. And then other one, bring it in and then kind of have to shove everything. Tuck and roll. No way. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm actually really surprised that I did that. <laughs> but look how cute. <laughs> Let's see. What, let me see your spring rolls. Oh, yes, Cindy, yours look great. Awesome. Let me see, Dina. <laughs> yours, you guys just all look really good. Julie, yours has got a little gross fur out the bottom. <laughs> That's awesome. Greg, where's yours? Did you roll one yet? <laughs> not yet. He's not quite ready. <laughs> Okay, so we can take that to our, our uh, let's see. Greg, yours, <laughs> did you overfill yours? <laughs> I love it. Okay, so this gives you an idea of, you can't put a ton in it. That's what I just learned. So I'm gonna transfer these over here to, I'm gonna do like a cutting board over here. Okay, and we're just gonna keep rolling, see if we can keep it going. Mine came with 24. I'm gonna see how, how many I can do. So fully submerge and drop on here. Time for round two. Let's see if I can do it again. Okay. All right. I'm going to go for one extra piece of spinach. Okay. A little bit of cabbage. Okay. So two, and I learned if you do this, like the lettuces around the outside, because carrots are a little bit pokey, some stuff can poke through the rice paper because it's just a delicate little being. So if we can keep the lettuce on the out, like on the base and the bottom, it seems to do better. Okay. So I did my cucumber, the bell pepper. What is this? The basil. Some cilantro. Okay. And two pieces of tofu do perfect in here. And I think it helps to have them in these two different chunks because then you can kind of manipulate it and shove it down. Okay, so maybe I moved too quick on this one and it's not quite. 
the paper has to be just so, so it's like able to stick to itself. Okay, that side. Side. Look. Try to get it tight. Yeah. Ta da. <laughs> That's kind of fun. It's satisfying once you can get it all in the same uh, in the roll there. This one wasn't as good as the first one, I'll admit. But what's nice is you can kind of push down some of the edges and get it to re stick. Once it's kind of here. Awesome. Look at that. Dan, you did it. <laughs> it's you. I love him. <laughs> this is great. Okay. Number three. Mine are getting a little damp and they're starting to kind of curl up there. All righty. Okay, lay that flat. Finish. Get a cabbage. And if you're not seeing, I'm kind of putting everything at the bottom, like third here. That seems to be helpful because you kind of move it around. Now what? Oh yeah, cucumber. Slices in there. I'm gonna do three in this one. Okay, a little bell pepper. Maybe just two. Okay. And our this is randomly my favorite part is rolling it. Okay. Right, and then pull down. Oops. Hey. Okay. Here we go. We're starting to take on different personalities. <laughs> this one's got a little hole in it, but he's great. Love that. That one I pulled on a little too tight. And two, make sure when you're stacking them together, don't let them touch because that rice paper, as it starts to change form again after being wrapped up, they get they can stick together. And then when you pull them apart, apparently um, they can just start ripping each other. So we're going to, when we wrap these up in plastic wrap, we're gonna wrap them individually, which I know is a lot of plastic wrap, but then we can have these later on as like a snack, or you can have them, you know, bust them out anytime, but we're gonna have spring rolls to have for like the whole week here. All right, number four. Peter's about to fall asleep. There we go. Okay, so I got my carrots on there. What do we got next? Cilantro. Cucumber. I do think red bell pepper would be better in here, just to add a nice pop of color. I've got, I'm seeing lots of green a little pop of orange that red would be nice so if you have red I'm sure it's very pretty and my paper is kind of brown um but okay am i missing am i missing anything no tofu
Uh, oops. Not good. We do. Okay. Here. Deck. Okay, I guess all my years of rolling burritos have paid off. Oh yeah, oh, that's a good one. Nice. Less is more, I'm finding out. Less is more. Dang, this is really making me appreciate when you get them at a restaurant and that everything, oh, this one's ripped. I'm gonna toss that one. I would, yeah, probably throw the ripped ones away, right? Um, but yeah, when you like go to a restaurant and everything's like perfectly laid and organized. <laughs> Just have a lot of experience wrapping these. Okay. Next, I like to flatten mine down on the paper there. I wonder what else you could put in here that would be good. like the, the classic ingredients in a spring roll. But I feel like spring rolls are typically shrimp or like pork is in them. There are some places like some pho restaurants that sell tofu ones that I've always been a big fan of. And you kind of only get two and you end up paying like six bucks for them or something. Okay, now we'll cucumber strips. I'll try to keep this one shorter. Pepper, tofu, okay, tuck and pull. Corners. Oh, the end of this one doesn't look very good. A little loose. I'm going to try to sh see if I can shove it back together. Pinch it in there. That's so fine. Oh. How many do I have? I have five so far. And only. A couple of ribs. I'm more, I'm, I'm impressed with myself. I didn't think, I don't know. At first I was like, oh, this will be easy. And then everyone that I was talking to today was like, oh no, that's going to be like the hardest thing you've ever done. <laughs> it's like, thanks guys for the support. But I'm glad that I watched some videos on it because got a little technique. All right. So, oh. I guess I'll just do these till I run out of tofu. Got a few pieces left. Carrot. <laughs> like someone said, great job, everyone. Everyone is doing really great. This is this is fun. It's great that we can all kind of see how each other are doing and that we get it them together too, which will be fun. Okay, I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't. Okay. Oh, that one's a little crunchy. This, this will help. Kind of reminds me of um, rolling sushi. It takes some. Um, Mindfulness here. I oh, don't want to take the paper towel with it. Okay. I feel like I'm getting worse at this. Um, 
think I'm not letting them like stay wet enough before I start rolling them. I think it's just helping here. Linda was telling me she'll have one sit in the water, one on the paper towel while she's rolling, and then pull that one. So maybe. Maybe I'm going to try that one for this and see how that goes with letting it soak. Like a science experiment. Okay. Intro. I think next time we're gonna try it unmuted. It's kind of lonely. It might <laughs> be nice to hear all of your guys' uh, experiences over there. Um, try to get that next one. What did someone just type in, Kelly? A red tie what? Ooh, someone's cooking a ramen at the same time. We've got some some experienced cooks um, doing some multitasking. I mean, you definitely could. If you had something going, like a, a soup or something going, be the perfect little combo with like a tie. Oops, I don't want my thumbs hanging out there. Okay. Ooh, did I overfill it? Okay. And I think that helps to kind of taper it at the top. Ooh, that one was not good. Oh, sad. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Nice. Mine was able to unroll. I guess these are a little bit more forgiving than I thought they were going to be. Perfect. Oh. Whoa. That one really. <laughs> I think I have to move quick on this one. Let's see. Okay. Mitch. I was in here. Oh, it's like shrinking before my eyes. This is what it feels like to work in a restaurant. Okay. But I do like how soft this is. It seems like it's, yeah. Oh, don't want that stem. Finish that. Cold, we eat them. Someone asked that if we eat them hot or cold. I mean, I guess I guess right now you still have warm tofu in there, so they'll be warm right now, and that's a, a great way to do them. But I'm just going to be throwing these in the fridge afterwards and just snacking on them cold for the rest of the week. Um, warming them up, like the cucumber and that, like throwing them in the microwave wouldn't be um, a great way to go. You know, okay, so I let mine sit in the water I think I, I didn't roll it perfectly, but letting it sit and soften was that was helpful for me at least. What did he say? Greg has to go. Where'd he go? Maybe he already left. Bye, Greg. <laughs> I saw that he got a few in there, so that's good. What time is it? Is it 35? Okay. Well, I only have two pieces of tofu left, so um, this will be my last roll anyway. Okay. Get this nice and soaked. Good. What do you guys think? Those of you that are eating them, give it a thumbs up. Any likes it? Nice. Any thoughts? What else you guys would add to this? I'm curious what what you guys might like in here instead. Got some more thumbs up. Love it. 
Yeah, I think next time I want to be able to hear you guys. Uh, option. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I need like a personal typer to be able to communicate with me. Okay. All right. Oh, bell pepper. Cute. You liked it? Love it. <laughs> and it's tofu. I know. It's like, can we get these guys to eat tofu? Okay. Mine isn't quite to get more wet here. I wonder if the, I should have done some with the white. Like, I wonder if the brown ones take a little bit longer. The texture is just a little bit different. But I will say, if you find the brown rice ones, they, they do really well. And I don't know comparatively, um, you know, if they're a little bit stronger or what, but they will be, um, you know, they're made out of brown rice. So it's a little bit healthier option. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, I would be scared to do the little ones that we got. <laughs> but you could make like little baby ones and here we go. Jocelyn is being a little pain. Come here. Um, all right, I don't like that one as much. Okay, so now we get to taste it. I'm gonna at least eat one now because I'm starving and it's like way past my dinner time right now. Okay. The brown rice ones I got at the co-op here in Boise. So Shelly, if you're, I know you're out in Twin Falls, but you know, you if you guys have like a um, health food store down in Twin, you might be able to. Um, mm -hmm. Eat the prettiest one. It tastes better when it's pretty. Mmm. That's good. It's limey and it's really spicy. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the two a little bit more than two tablespoons of sriracha is adding some kick. Woo! That's good, though. Hopefully you guys like spicy, but the tofu is great in there. Like, it adds some, like, meatiness. A couple of these, you've got, like, a pretty good size, at least a good size snack, but these, I could have three of these, and that would be, like, a good lunch for me, I feel like. Oh, you like the sauce? Yeah. yeah, I know. The sauce turned out good. If you like spice, this, you should be eating my sauce. <laughs> um, cool. What do you guys think? I know I see some of you guys are still working hard. Mm -hmm. mm. I just got a bite with a ton of cilantro and basil. I love that flavor. I hope you guys all like cilantro. <laughs> some people are typing in. But... Yeah, so these these classes, I will inform you. I don't know how, if you guys could type in, how did you guys find out about this class? Was it Carrium? Was it through Chip Club? I'm curious if you guys have access to your uh, your chat box. Let me know. Keep them coming. Definitely. Love it. Chip. Okay. Hmm. Chip Club email, Carrium. How about Dan and Maria? How did you guys find your type of note? If you guys are using your phone, you need to get like a snazzy ring light phone holder like what I have. <laughs> this thing is sweet and it gives me good lighting. Carrium and chip email. Awesome. What's that? Oh yeah. Amazon baby. Okay, well yeah, I'm gonna have one in a couple of weeks and we're going to be yeah, I think, so the next one is, because next month is blood pressure, like awareness month or hypertension month. So we'll be doing a really high potassium salad. So it's going to have some wheat berries in there, a lot of different greens and avocado and blueberries, and it should be fun. So we'll be sending it out via, via Carrium, chip email, constant contact, that flyer. I'll put it on the Facebook group just kind of all the same. Eventually they'll be on the St. Luke's Lifestyle Medicine website. So then you can just go to our website. It'll have the date and the link for class and the recipe will be there too. But I'll do a giant blast of the upcoming ones for next month and it should be fun. This was great. I'm so glad you guys were able to join. Now you guys have some food for the week. Uh, hopefully you like it. Awesome. So good to see everyone too. I haven't seen some of you guys in a while. 
Okay. All right, you guys. Well, have a good evening, and I'll see you again in a couple weeks. Bon appetit. Oh, it's sticking to my finger. <laughs> mm. Okay. Ooh, that was great. What's that?